In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern where we do have activity out there in the tropics to discuss. There's a couple of threats in the Atlantic as well as a couple of tropical storms in the Pacific. Both models that we're going to be taking a look at today do show a lot of extra activity as well as things look to just really, really ramp up. We do see storminess in some areas of the nation but we do see very dry conditions in others so we're going to be discussing who is going to be dry and who is going to be seeing a lot more precipitation as well as an overall pattern that is back and forth with some cool downs some warm-ups back and forth throughout august but there is some signs that we could see some cooler air in the central and eastern states similar to what we saw in the beginning of august which was beautiful if you ask me before we really dive into it, we just uploaded our winter forecast. That's on the top right corner of your screen. I know a lot of people uh, like to see that video, so I just wanted to remind you guys in case you missed it, it is up there to watch. We do see this uh, massive hurricane that does develop here on the model run. We'll get to that in a second, but we do have this area here with a 0% chance of development over the next two days, as well as a 20% chance over the next seven. This one is overall unlikely to develop, uh, and it's unlikely to go up in that percentage really in my opinion because it's heading northward from that point it's already pretty far north uh i don't see this being a very favorable one to see develop this one though comes off of africa as a traditional what we would call mdr wave main development region is what that is short for and this one currently has a 10 percent chance of development over the next two days but a 60 over the next seven this was just a code yellow yesterday. I want to say it was like a 30 or 40% chance over the next seven days. Now it's a 60. So it's bumped up significantly in the percent chance of development. And now we have a better chance than a coin flip of seeing this one uh, actually develop. And you can see here the GFS model goes crazy with this one. Uh, I'll pause the model run so we can kind of watch it play out. But it develops uh, in the area that's obviously being uh, depicted here. This is by the 13th, so four days from now at 5 p.m. We can see it moving through the western areas of that region, and now it's at the very far western tip by the 15th, six days from now, developing into likely a tropical storm, at least on this model run. It's after that point as it's north of Haiti, north of Dominican Republic there, kind of between those areas and Bermuda, that it becomes likely a hurricane. And by this point on this model run, likely a major hurricane as it's between the Bahamas and Bermuda. Thankfully, on this particular model, it only comes so close to the East Coast before kind of turning out innocently, as you can see. But if I turn it back to the 6E run, let's see, this, this is probably the one, but we're going to see that this is kind of all over the place. Let's watch it kind of come in. Develops a little quicker on this particular model run slows down and this one's out to sea as well but there was a previous model run uh, not too long ago that did show this one kind of hitting the east coast and we've had back and forth models showing that so i just want you guys to be aware that these models are very all over the place towards the tail end this still poses a threat to the gulf or the east coast or even coastal canada maybe even bermuda this is a very wide area that this one could head towards after it's outside of this orange area. So we're going to be watching this one closely over the next week to maybe even two weeks as this one slowly moves across the Atlantic. Thankfully, we have a lot of time to watch it, but details should come together here over the coming days and weeks, as we just mentioned. Let's go ahead and take a look at the European model, though, and dive into that. First off, we're going to take a look at the storminess. Uh, thankfully, this model run as well does not have any East Coast strikes. Yesterday's video, we saw an east coast hit on both models so we have improved but again they are all over the place and this is definitely not over yet it's a good sign but only a slight one because it's very far out to take it with a grain of salt let's take a look at the next couple of days though as we move towards tomorrow on sunday the 10th we can see uh, a little bit of activity throughout areas of the midwest and plains happening that's mostly in the form of just thunderstorms we do also have a lot of thunderstorms throughout the southeast areas here as well. We'll take this towards Monday on the 11th, and we can see a lot of activity still around for the plains, mostly the southern plains, the Midwest, and into the Great Lakes there. Kind of a linear storm mode. We continue to just see the southeast activity flourishing here by Monday. Tuesday on the 12th, what we see is a more organized structure of storms for the Midwest, kind of two lines of it, and then throughout the Great Lakes, as well as east, uh, eastern areas of Canada being impacted by this. We also see the southeast is just still continuing to see these isolated and scattered thunderstorms, which really isn't too unusual. It's also 
Uh, important for me to note that there is a ridge here in the west and then a trough in the central states and then another ridge here along the east. So we have a pattern that's kind of split like that with the cooler air kind of diving down the center uh, is the current look. As we keep going towards Wednesday on the 13th, really the whole deeper south area, the whole eastern states are seeing activity by this point. Likely a little cooler than it is right now by Wednesday the 13th into Thursday the 14th as we have a little bit of a trough in the east. It's not too significant, but it should be near normal to slightly below normal temperatures around. Even by Thursday the 14th, we continue to see thunderstorms in those deep south locations. Friday on the 15th, a little quieter. Maybe some thunderstorm activity there for parts of the plains in upper Midwest, but uh, as well as like the Gulf Coast, but really uh, a quieter day. Saturday on the 16th, we continue to get heavy activity up here in parts of the upper Midwest, like Minnesota, Wisconsin, the upper peninsula of Michigan there. We'll continue on towards Sunday the 17th. We see this low here over eastern Canada. It's dragging a cold front, and that's why we're seeing some thunderstorm activity along this. Not a huge amount, but a little bit there. Uh, we also get a little bit of ridging over the Rockies and maybe some very, very soft troughing in the east. But again, nothing too crazy popping up on this model run. Monday the 18th is themed mostly with thunderstorms over the central states. Tuesday on the 19th, that moves a little bit eastward, but it's just inching. It's not really uh, a huge step eastward by any means. I want to keep going towards Wednesday on the 20th because we do see... A lot of thunderstorms throughout the deeper south and southeast again. The four corner states as well as areas to the north of there. A little bit of monsoon activity maybe picking back up around the 20th time frame and beyond. Thursday the 21st, northern plains up midwest. Another thunderstorm event there as well as like the deep southeast continuing to see some thunderstorms. Friday the 22nd, again we're watching the plains and midwest as well as that southeast area. Now kind of expanding up into the mid-Atlantic and northeast but hardly and by Saturday the 23rd, the second to last day on this model run, we do get a little bit of tropical action trying to get going nearby the Bahamas. But this is very far out. This is not that orange risk area. This is one after it. And you should definitely take this with a grain of salt. The main, I would say, reason to kind of think about this and the way to take this information would be that these models are showing kind of system after system after system. And if we get enough of those put together, the odds are that we will see impacts from one of them. If let's say we get like five or six systems here throughout August, uh, we'll just continue to monitor them though. Uh, Sunday on the 24th, again, very quiet. There's a couple of pockets of thunderstorms, but really, really quiet. And because of that, we actually end up with a huge, huge lack of precipitation throughout the Ohio Valley and parts of the Midwest, the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast here. This is very drastically below normal. And then we actually end up with some really decent amounts of precipitation for the plains, Midwest, and then the Southeast here, kind of the areas where we saw a lot of thunderstorm activity throughout the model run. Looking at the anomalies, there it is, well below normal precipitation throughout the mid-Atlantic, mid Northeast, parts of the Ohio Valley as well. And then we do have pockets of near normal to above normal here for the deep South and Southeast, as well as the plains and Midwest here further Northwestward. Looking at the total snowfall, I've been showing this every couple of days. There's a couple specks over the Rockies, but nothing too crazy yet. So we're just going to move right past this. But it is exciting to look at. And definitely a month from now, this will probably start to pick up quite a bit. Uh, the fact that the models are calling for any flakes in the United States in August is actually pretty crazy uh, by itself. Looking at the temperature anomalies, here's the high temperatures for today. Um... Below normal for the southeast still, as well as the northern Rockies and plains. We'll kind of just watch how this moves around. But we see things warm up generally in the east a little bit, but not hugely. When There's no heat waves or anything for the near future, at least. This is by the 15th, and we're finally warming up in the east here by this point. This is that threat of another kind of Arctic blast slash cold front here around the 17th. We see this really cold pocket that wants to move in. But I think this warmth is wanting to put up more of a fight than it did in early August because it kind of just deflects this thing out pretty quickly. Also, when we look out west, there's not any hugely warm temperatures here. And if there was, we would certainly see this just dive straight into the east. Just a couple of reasons why this one doesn't really take full shape. We can see areas of the Great Lakes and northeast get in on this below average temperatures. But this is nothing like that one in early August, as I mentioned earlier. 
and we stay kind of neutral with the temperatures kind of back and forth there's some cooler days for most areas like here on thursday friday 21st 22nd and then we warm right back up as we move towards the 24th uh, but it is worth noting that we do see a warming trend here for the western seaboard overall and this will likely force cooler air into the east if this takes place this is 360 hours out so that's a big if but definitely something we're going to continue to monitor with all that being said be sure to subscribe we upload every single day you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video